Hello there fellow summoners, Mad Dog HT here again and I got a, another Alliance War node video. This is node 13. It has Masochism and Indomitable. Um, now I have all these fights from the whole season. I have links in the description to look below to, to jump to whatever fight you want. Um, and it's also in the timeline so feel free to, to hit the fights that you um, are interested in seeing if, if one is, is not the one for you. Um, first up, we got a Sasquatch. Um, and Sasquatch, he is a stubborn defender. Um, you know, with my rank 3 torch, I know that I'm going to be able to get to Nova Flame um, fairly easily. And you can see he's just melting. Um, and I'm just keeping an eye out for um, the Masochism timer. And I'm just going to try to do double parries. Parry on the first one trigger the masochism and then get my parry stun on the next and it doesn't look like i actually do get nova flame on this um close to it maybe right here i didn't have enough temperature um but i'm just letting you know i just let them know the, not the nova flames the incinerates just do their work um so that wasn't bad at all pretty quick um and again so these are some of the preseason fights where I'm typically never boosted um, for the season fights, especially with season 21 with all the extra boosts. Um, I'm boosted for every single fight. Um, here we have an Ultron. I'm going to go in with Dr. Doom. Um, Dr. Doom, you know, because Ultron's stubborn, Dr. Doom is stubborn. Um, I'll be able to evade and build up those indestructible charges from, from my parries and whatnot. Um, and not really have to worry about that. Um, and yeah, I'm going to put on a, do a lot of heavy, um, to, to put on those staggers, um, which will take off his armor. Um, it will take off the, potentially the, uh, regen at, uh, 50 and 25%. I got hit there. Um, and I'm think I, I yeah, I think I was going to try to push him to a higher power bar, but I'm like, no, nah, I'm just going to hit him with an L3. Um, kind of get into the cycle, um, but not really because uh, he doesn't have enough power just to keep that going. Um, there he evades on me, um, which kind of sucks. That's one thing. It's like with Dr. Doom, if you're going to do that cycle and you're going to have him at L3, they can potentially evade on you. I know that happened to me in Abyss a few times. Um, we were trying to do the power steal, and then they evade, and you miss miss getting the L1 off. Um, but I nuked him with an L2, and Ultron goes down. That was pretty easy. Did get hit once or twice, um, but not too bad. Here's another um, preseason war. This one has a Sabretooth. Sabretooth is not um, a defensive champ. Um, he's a mercenary offensive. So here I'm going to go in with Void. Void. Um, he loves masochism. Granted, he can't reverse any of the healing, but he can block it. So he can he can end up blocking the masochism, and he's going to be blocking the regen that Sabretooth gets. So um, really not a concern here. I'm just going to try to play nice and easy and slow, get some double parries off. Um, try I try to watch the timers so that um, I trigger my parry before my intimidating presence timer that void has goes off so that way those um, debuffs can stick um, and also try to make sure that um, i throw my like l1s when it's gonna stick so i just made it in time right there he's heal block now um, because i have enough debuffs i have max um, petrify um, and, or sorry, not Max Petrify. I think I do have Max Petrify, but I also have Max Despair. Um, so he's not going to be regening anymore for the entire fight. Um, so I just need to be conscious of the masochism. Um, if I'm going to go for the parry, make sure I'm going to do a double parry or whatnot. But this guy goes down fairly easily. A little bit of chip damage, but no hits received. Pretty clean fight. Um, and now we have a thing. Um thing is a stubborn defender this guy is not awakened though um 
usually um, Human Torch does just uh, just fine with uh, with dealing with these things on the map. Um, and so I'm gonna go in here again. I'm gonna do try to do some double parries um, where possible. I'm just gonna try to do a lot of medium light mediums. Um, I don't think I'm gonna worry too much about my temperature. Um, just because I can just get some more hits. I feel I can get uh, in a better flow. Um, trying to not trigger the dexterity and um, the indestructible on his special attacks. Um, and yeah, so it's going pretty well. As far as the masochism goes, as long as you know it's there, don't get hit like that. Um, the incinerates will trigger it because I'm just doing like medium light medium combos. Um, and with any incinerates on, because I have despair maxed out, um, the regeneration is, it, it pretty much gets eaten up. And so here I got uh, Nova Flame going, um, and I'm trying to gonna get him to throw a special um, while those are up. It doesn't, they don't last very long because my temperature is at zero. That's okay. Just slow and steady. I did get hit at the beginning, but I think I finished this fight out clean, if I remember right. Um, and I just really got to pay attention to um, where he's at on his power bar and then making sure you get to that 15 at a, at a decent rotation on your combo. Um, and yeah, this, this is uh, going fairly smooth. Um, I'm already back to L3. I'm I'm not certain. I didn't have a, I didn't have a power boost on or anything like that. So, um, gonna hit him again. The incinerates plus the sting damage potential could um, help take care of this guy. And he is gonna go down right here. Yeah. So not too bad. Um, thing. There are some decent placements on the map. I don't think that that is the best one. Here we have another thing. Um, and I think I might use Void on this one. Um, let's see, do I use Void? I think it really all, all depends on the matchups for my line. Yeah, I do use Void. Void, he is also a stubborn defender, so I can build up the indestructibles. He is, like, super, super good at taking down the thing bosses. Um, he can do it really reliably. Um, the intimidating presence debuffs they just do their work over, over time over the five because you have five minutes you don't really have to worry about that I came in here um, a little low on health I can't remember who I was fighting on the first node I do have all these nodes um, like the node four it, I have that fight uploaded um, I think it might have been a name war um, but anyway, so I'm, I'm, I came in with just over 60%, but, you know, with building up indestructibles, um, trying to push him back over the power bar and get him to throw a special now. He's kind of being a little stingy. There he goes. Um, but because you can build up those indestructible charges um, as a stubborn attacker, um, it makes thing very, very easy to deal with. Um, and if, if the intimidating, if the IP debuffs do trigger masochism, that's not a big worry. It just gives you an easier in if you need a parry. Um, again, double parry to eat up the masochism and get your stun. Um, and yeah, so this one is, this one is awakened compared to the last one. Um, but Void just does really, really well. Um, I've taken a little bit of block damage, but nothing too significant and he's about to go down once I get a yeah get a hit in and so there we go um no hits received pretty clean fight nothing nothing too much to worry about and now um we are the last last uh, thing fight was a season a real season fight this is a this is um, war number two this is against a void um and I debated on who I should bring in for this fight, um, and I ended up just deciding to bring in Thing. Now, 
Does Thing have anything special to do on this fight? Not really. Um, the reason why I did take him in was one, is he is a stubborn defender. I do a lot of parrying with Thing to build up his rock stacks. And I just thought, you know, hey, um, if I need to dex anything as far as the specials go, um, that will be countered by all of the, the indestructibles I have built up. And um, I'm just going to try to take it pretty slow and um, try to make sure that I get my 10 hit combo in when when his IP debuff timer comes around. And now the, the timers, they are very similar. Um, and there I did get hit and it reset the timer. It's not that big of a deal because I'm going straight into a combo right, right there. Uh, I'm going to throw off my L3. It's going to put out a lot of damage because I'm at max rock stacks, or their Furies, max Furies. Um, and yeah, just be very conscious of your combo. Um, I just like to take it slow just because um, you can really manage your combo that way um, and not have to worry about um, getting debuff stuck on you. And there I did get hit again. Luckily I had protection up. Um, I am gonna take a little bit of damage there from the IP debuff um, on, but I got it knocked off pretty quickly. Um, and I've taken, what, 25%, 26% health lost. Nothing too crazy, nothing that a, like a health potion or whatever won't, won't cover, and void goes down. So hit a few times, but Overall, not, not too bad. Now this is war number three. We're going up with Mr. Sinister. Um, this is a stubborn war. All, all of those season wars that we had this, this season were all um, stubborn. We didn't have any flow or bulwark or whatever the other options are. They are fairly irrelevant these days. Everybody does stubborn. Um, and here I'm going with Torch. Now, Torch is a really good option. I, I love Torch for Masochism just because you can consistently um, disable the Masochism with your regular combos. So you know you can get your ends if you want to do some parry stuns. Um, with Mr. Sinister, he's going to be reflecting and throwing back those incinerates on you, which is just fine because Void, not Void, Human Torch is incinerate immune. Um, but in addition to that, all the incinerates that he does try to reflect back on you, it just builds up your smolder. So that just makes your future incinerates um, even stronger and more potent. Um, and you can see this guy is melting. Um, I do have max despair. So um, the regen from his from critting against um, Mr. Sinister is minimized to be pretty much nothing. And... Yeah, I mean, I could have built up temperature to make make sure the um, the incinerates lasted longer, but you know, sometimes I I do that, sometimes I don't. I just like to stay in a good rhythm, and I, sometimes I just feel like doing like a parry heavy. It's just, it just doesn't work as well. Um, here we have a Modok. Now I'm gonna take in Human Torch for this one. Uh, Modok is a stubborn defender, so he's going to get those um, indestructibles. He has that auto block that's pesky. He has um, the masochism going on for him, so you have to have your double parry game on. Um, and I was doing really, really well um, in this fight, just trying to take it slow, doing, trying to get my double parries in. I probably should have just blocked that L1. Um, it builds up Smolder because it's an energy attack. Um, trying to do some double parries and get a heavy off that will disable his stun shield. So I'm doing short combos because I just don't want him to auto block. Um, and then something like that, which I don't know why I threw that L2. I got really lucky that he didn't just like totally punish me. Um, but yeah, if, I, if you charge your heavy and kind of delay it to where the last part of the heavy hits him, it will disable his shield. And there, just miss a block, and man, that took a lot of damage right there. Um, so I'm down to 45%. Um, there, I'm at, I'm at max temp, and I'm gonna kill him right here. 
So I messed up. Still successfully killed him. It went okay. Health potion can cover that. Now we have an Elsa. So I have, I think I'm gonna have, it might be back to back or then the one after this. Um, I did do, I did scout ahead of time. I checked, they, this guy didn't have suicide, neither did the, the next one. Um, and then I confirmed with um, one of my alliance mates that had um, this um, guy's champions on a different path just to make sure that he didn't like place with suicides and then take them off. So I went in with Torch. I said, okay, no suicides. Torch can do this. Um, I'm super comfortable dex fully dexing that L1. So that's what I'm going to try to stick her to and just try to keep applying, you know, medium light mediums, put those incinerates on, um, push her to that L1 and then bait it out. And yeah, this is a pretty simple, straightforward fight. Um, so long as I don't like get parried um, by her um, on trying to attack, which will then do her like counter evade mechanic. Um, should be pretty good. Her L2 does throw off an incinerate. Um, and I'm not certain that the bullets um, are energy damage. They, they might, I had, I had to look into that, but did happen to get hit it would just build up your smolder you would still take decent damage but i'm just playing it safe safe and easy keep pushing her to l1 and you can see she's going down nice and smoothly um, without any problems masochism really isn't a concern and look i finished with 100 percent class disadvantage torch he does the job so that was a pretty um pretty solid fight um, 62 to nothing. And now we have war number six. This is against the Sentinel. Again, stubborn. Um, and I think I'm going to go in with Void. Yep. Um, you know, for for most masochism fights, if I, if I have Void on the team, I'm just going to bring him just because um, he can get around um, a lot of it easily. He can totally block out the masochism uh, regen, unfortunately on this one, it doesn't let you reverse, which is fine. Uh, I'm going to block, um, the end parts of this L1 so that I can just keep having indestructibles available. Um, and I'm just going to do medium light, medium, do the double parries. Um, and while if I keep repeating L1, um, attacks, it is going to build up his analysis here. I'm trying to just bait out his L1 because not that the, I can I can evade the L2 and I think I might have him get pushed to L2, but it's just the L1 is um, it's, to me it's easier. And if you happen to get hit by it, um, it doesn't hurt as bad. So like if you happen to slip up on an L2, even though Void is a incinerate immune, um, it is going to put some hurt on you. Um, there I got a armor break put on me, which is fine, um, cause I'm going to get some willpower healing on it and he's at a hundred percent analysis. And so I think maybe after this, I just do regular combos and then just trying to make sure I can stick those intimidating presence, um, debuffs, watch out for the unstoppables. He's going to get the extra power gain. Um, power reserve mechanic on his specials. Um, but yeah, he's not going to be able to regen because I got him blocked. I got Fear of the Void up. I got five um, debuffs on him. And I'm just going to kind of just slowly wait it out and he dies. So that was a um, pretty solid fight. Um, next up, we have a Captain Marvel movie. And so for this one, I was debating on who I should bring in for this out of these three. And I decided to go class disadvantage warlock. And one thing that I did not understand would happen is that I'm going to, with infection, I'm going to turn off masochism, which I didn't know um, you could do. I guess that's just like a defensive ability. Um, and you reduce defensive ability um, um, accuracy. So if you check this out, 
So masochism has been triggered and I parry. I'm like, oh, that was, in, that was interesting. And I parry again. So I'm, she's at two infections um, and she is not um, getting the masochism triggered over and over again, right? So um, that was like a pleasant surprise. So here I'm just, because I have that armor break on, she's getting some, um, there, the masochism did trigger there because um, it's like 30% per infection. But generally speaking, like it's, there again, it's not, it's not applying. And she is degening because of willpower. And that fight turned out really well. Warlock, he is a beast. I really like that dude. Um, takes down Captain Marvel movie. And here we have war number eight. This is another Elsa. Again, I scouted out ahead of time, looked at the profile, um, did not have suicides on. I made sure that another line mate that was fighting this guy's champs confirmed that suicides were not on. And because you can put suicides, place the defense, and then take them off. So that would be really, really bad if, I would, if you were to go into this fight without a mutant when Elsa has suicides because that bleed will just degen you away. Um, and this fight doesn't go really any different than the last one. Um, going to try to just keep her to her L1s, evade those, counter, um, put on the incinerates, meet a lot of medium light mediums. Um, and yeah, you know, this fight is nothing special. Um, I'm not sure where I would put Elsa. I mean, really, Elsa is not a great defender um, unless she has suicides on. And then hopefully you're smart enough to just bring a mutant and then they will destroy her. So if you have suicides, she could be pretty good. But if you don't, I don't know that I would place her. Um, but I mean, if you need a diversity spot, then then she will definitely work. Um yeah, she's, she's almost dead. Excuse me. Ooh, got some yawns. And, um, yeah, so, I mean, as far as this masochism indomitable fight, um, I did not die all season long. Um, you know, every once in a while, you know, I'm trying to go for, like, the double parry, um, and you miss it. I've gotten hit. Um, got tagged by that one MODOK. But generally speaking, this this fight has been pretty simple and straightforward. I have no problems um, doing it. This was probably the most interesting placement. So LTC, a guy used to be in our alliance. We faced up against him. This is war number 10, I think it was. Um, and it's a wasp. And I'm like, hmm, who do I use? So I went in with Human Torch. I considered using Thing. Um, but I had some other fights that I was going to use him on and um, trying to spread out who I who I used here. Now, the thing that made this fight a little bit tricky is those timers. You don't, I mean, the, the masochism one has the little global thing on top. Um, but it's, you know, when you're fighting and you're trying to manage all that stuff, it's a little bit difficult to, to remember and know which one's which. And so I was, I was a little bit confused as to like when I could safely hit her, um, without getting punished by that evade and the shock. Um, unfortunately the shock doesn't build up smolder. Um, and yeah, so, but I have a rank three torch. I am boosted because all, all of the season fights are boosted because I have so many boosts from the solo events. Um, it's a little bit easier to take this chick down when both the timers are kind of the same because then you can kind of just say, okay, well, don't worry about it. And then just get in your combo. She does go down, but I did, I did take, I didn't take any real hits. Um, she would have hit me, would have hurt. But um, the shock damage, it was, it, it, it took a chunk of, a chunk of my health. Um, I mean, now we got a Captain America Infinity War. He is a stubborn defender. Um, not a very good one. Um, but, you know, he does have the glancing. But so for this one, I'm going to go in with Void. Um, 
and yeah this is a pretty simple straightforward fight double parry try to um, apply your l1s when you after you take down the masochism timer and this guy will just kind of slowly melt void is super reliable i think i do get tagged with like two hits towards the very end kind of let my guard down on a double parry and missed it um but yeah so here i'm just just trying to bait out his specials and then get my ends you know try to double parry like that if you know he comes in with masochism up and yeah in those ip debuffs um you know, it's nothing fast, it's not like a Corvus, it's not like a Ghost where you're just blitzing some some of these champs, but just super, super reliable. Here I held for my L2 and I waited till um, Fear of the Void was up, that would in increase the damage. He throws a special, I get both a degen and a weakness on him, so I got some extra debuffs. See, I didn't get hit right, right there at the end, but Captain America Infinity War, he goes down. Um, next up, this is war number 11. We have another Sentinel. Um, I do not have Void on my team for this one, so I'm going to go in. Ooh, excuse me. I'm going to go in with, um, Human Torch. And idea here is pretty much the same thing. Double parry, get off the incinerates, and block the special ones. Now, I remember this i came into this thinking okay i'm gonna i'm gonna do a double parry and like my block just totally failed at the beginning and i just get smacked took like 20 percent of my health that kind of sucked so there i'm just gonna do a block dash back and block um you know sentinel is super super tanky um but if you keep blocking those um l1s the smolders will be built up and it will increase your damage over time and you want to block the end of the special most indefinitely because torch is not a stubborn defender so um, if you dex out of that and you have some like incinerates going on um, you're going to lose out on the damage because he's going to get that indestructible um so yeah i dex out of the back back part of that i shouldn't have that's right i went in with a parry just block so i got 15 smolders and this guy's melting pretty quick the incinerate damage is going up and up and up again i dexed out of the back half i would not recommend that um, just block it all um, build up the smolder and let those incinerates burn this dude to the ground which is what happens um but besides the very beginning of missing that block it was pretty clean and this is the last war of the season, so I'm like max, max, max boosted because I have a rank three, um, uh, rank three Doctor Doom on Power Snack, and so I was like, well, I'm gonna be taking that fight. I'm gonna have all these other fights and putting on all the boosts, um, and you know, Torch is gonna build up Smolders so fast on this Mystic uh, Ebony Maw. Just try to get some double parries in so you can get a heavy in um so you can take down his persuasive charges um i do not think this guy gets up to the 20 where you can have that falter coming um uh, maybe he does i can't remember i don't know maybe he does um and i think he does put a degen on me but it was pretty weak yeah, so it only took, I mean, I take, what, 5% health, so nothing too bad. I kind of get backed up here in the corner and come in, hit him with um, an L2. I did have Falter on, but I can't can't miss when you're at temperature of uh, 10 or above, so I was able to land that, and Maw goes down pretty quick. Um, minimal damage taken, only it took 22 hits. So that's all the fights for this season. I didn't die once, um, pretty successful. Um, and I'll be uploading other notes here shortly. Thanks for watching, fellas, and I'll see you in the next one.